Welcome to Prime Asset TV, your source for all things pensions. Today, in first of our series, we will be featuring three of Jamaica's most influential leaders in the pensions industry, namely Mr. Herbert Hall, Mr. Joseph M. Matalon, and Mr. Alan Lewis. My name is Ozel Higgins, and I will be your host throughout this program. Herbert Andrew Hall attended Jamaica College between 1943 and 1949. He represented the school in both cricket and football. He was also awarded the Jamaica Scholarship in 1950. Mr. Hall studied law at the Cambridge University in London. He was also employed to Life of Jamaica from 1970 to 1993 and is currently president of Prime Asset Management Limited. He has served his country on several voluntary boards and is currently the president of the Jamaica Association for the Deaf. When I count back, I'm looking at 45 years of involvement in financial services. Some of it in life insurance, but for the last 20 years, it's been exclusively dealing with pension funds and pension fund management. There are about 900,000 Jamaicans who are employed and who pay their salary, who get paid their salaries by PAYE. Of that 900,000, 90,000, or just exactly 10% of those people, are members of registered pension plans. Is it the people's fault? that there is no pension plan for them? I would hesitate to make that judgment. The real reason that there are no pension plans for those people is that no government of this country in the last half a century has ever deemed it necessary to legislate mm -hmm. that if you employ people on a permanent basis for years, then you must have in place some arrangement for their retirement. The fact of the matter is that I think in any country, a state of development that Jamaica is in, must now be prepared to look at legislating the need for employers to put some kind of retirement benefit in place for the people who are there employing for the long term. Okay. We have to report to the trustees of the pension plan on a monthly basis as required by law to report to the regulators and to the trustees as to how the plan is performing. It will be the same advice that I give to new entrants into any plan that, that Prime manages. I put that 37 and a half years of contributing service right in front of their face. Whether you're 23, 24 years old now, if you add 37 and a half years to that, you will be at retirement age and you have to start thinking about a pension now. Not when you're 40, not when you're 45, but now. When you go to seek employment, as difficult as it may seem, the shortage of jobs out there. The people coming into the jobs are asking questions of the HR department. Do you provide health insurance for me and my family? Do you provide study leave with pay if I want to advance uh, my education and sharpen my skills in specific areas? They never ask if there's a pension plan. And when they do, when they are told that the company happens to have a pension plan, as far as they're concerned, that's not a plus. The pluses are the things they have asked for. Their mind is not on saving for their retirement. But with the 37 and a half years facing you at age 25, that is when you have to start thinking. 
And if the company does not have a registered pension plan, ask them. If I wish to start an individual retirement plan for myself, will you deduct the monies out of my pay before you take tax so I can start my own savings out of my own funds? But they should ask, because until enough people start to ask this, then the employers will not realize that not having that facility available to their employees could be an inhibiting factor about getting good people into the workplace. The largest employer in this country is our government. Every person who pays taxes pays for the pension of the largest of the employees of the largest employer in this country. He ain't paying nothing for his own. His employer ain't paying nothing for him. But he is paying for the million odd government servants who do not contribute to their own pension for the most part and who are paid out of my and their taxes. When people get to realize that, you must understand that until they clear up the decisions now being taken for the public sector pension fund, where those people are going to have to start funding their own pension. The workforce outside of government is still sitting back and saying, why are you going to force me to contribute when the biggest employer in the country, who is my government, don't force no your process. people to contribute either. Those things have to be put in place. They have to be put in place by a team of the government and the players and a second tranche of the pension regulations has now to be begun so that all these new approaches can become law rather than things waiting to happen and hoping that the industry will survive until they are made to happen. I hope that this effort will be beginning in the very, very near future. Thank you, sir. On that note, um Thank you very much, sir.